And the answer is 0 0.002. Two in a thousand times, you would have a different version, a different copy number. It's one in a thousand is the mutation rate per generation, and there's two generations between your grandfather and you. Now, these another advantage of using um, length differences as genetic markers is that they're much easier to detect than sequence differences. They can easily be detected by automated DNA analysis. Um, here's an example of a readout of the markers from one person. So here's the two alleles of one marker, two alleles of a different marker, a different one, a different one. In each case, they're shown as a trace. And the position of the peaks identifies the number of repeats. So at this locus, this person has a 7-repeat allele and a 9-repeat allele. At this locus, they have a 4-repeat allele and a 7-repeat allele. These analyses, these automated analyses, are very accurate and very reliable. The weak link in these studies is the humans in the study. So the chain of custody, as it's called, becomes vitally important. What happens to the sample after it's collected at the crime scene and then maybe handled by detectives, passed on into storage for some length of time, transferred to a laboratory for an analysis, generating data, which eventually makes its way to the courtroom. There's lots of potential here for human errors, and it's these human errors that make DNA fingerprinting not absolutely perfect. It's these human errors that give rise to the courtroom debates now on whether or not a particular bit of DNA evidence should be admitted into the evidence. So we've finished our study of DNA fingerprinting by talking about what VNTR loci are, variable number tandem repeats, why they're highly variable in populations, how they have nevertheless stable inheritance, and the standard sets that have been developed for forensic work. And as I said, the big concern is not the, the DNA itself or the automated analysis, but human errors that can creep into the process. Coming up next, we're going to begin talking about real personal genomics. We'll talk about analyzing single genes and gene panels. I hope to see you there.